When Apple released macOS 10.15 Catalina back on October 7th, 2019, they included a little known feature called Sidecar that allows you to use an iPad as a second display, which allows you to expand your Mac's workspace. In this video, I'm going to focus on how Sidecar can be used with Final Cut Pro to improve your video editing workflow, especially for those of you who edit on the go using a Mac notebook. But before we dive in, let's go over the system requirements for Sidecar. I'll include a link down in the description to Apple's white paper on this feature, as well as a support article for how to use it. Sidecar requires a Mac with Intel Skylake processors or later, and any iPad that supports Apple Pencil. Your Mac must have Mac OS 10.15 Catalina or later installed, and your iPad must be running iPad OS 13 or later. There are a few additional requirements that you should be aware of in case you've already tried using Sidecar, but haven't had any luck getting it to work. First, both devices devices must be signed into iCloud with the same Apple ID using two-factor authentication. To use Sidecar wirelessly, both devices must be within 30 feet or 10 meters of each other and have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and handoff turned on. Also make sure that the iPad is not sharing its cellular connection and the Mac is not sharing its internet connection. To use Sidecar over USB, make sure that your iPad is set to trust your Mac. Once you have all that set up, you can start using Sidecar with your Mac, your iPad, and Final Cut Pro. If you're using Mac OS Big Sur or later, to get started using Sidecar with Final Cut Pro, click on the Control Center icon in your menu bar, then click the Display section, and then click on your iPad to connect to it. For those using Mac OS Catalina, refer to the Apple support article linked below to see how to connect to your iPad. Once you're connected to your iPad using Sidecar, you'll notice a new icon in your menu bar highlighted in blue. This is the displays icon. You can use this to control the display preferences on your iPad, like hiding the sidebar and touch bar controls. You can also access display preferences and set up the position of your secondary display in relation to your main display. I always have my iPad to the left of my MacBook Pro, so I position it accordingly. You can also control where the sidebar and touch bar are displayed on your iPad here. Because my iPad is to the left of my MacBook Pro, I display the sidebar on the left side of the iPad. Back in Final Cut Pro, you can now choose which component of the Final Cut Pro user interface you want displayed on your iPad. Just go to the second display view window and select which part of the Final Cut Pro user interface you want displayed on your iPad. You can also go to Window, Show in Secondary Display, and choose Browser, Viewers, or Timeline. I always send my browser to the iPad so I can get the Final Cut Pro user interface as simplified as possible on the screen of my MacBook Pro. I want to see the viewer and the timeline on my main display only since that's what I'm working with the majority of the time I'm editing my YouTube videos. So what does the sidebar feature allow you to do? Starting from the top icon and working our way down, you can tap the top icon to show or hide the menu bar when viewing a window in full screen on an iPad. The next button button allows you to show or hide your computer's dock on your iPad. Next is Command, touch and hold to set the Command key, double tap to unlock the key. Next is Option, touch and hold to set the Option key, double tap to lock the key. Next is Control, touch and hold to set the Control key, double tap to lock the key. And lastly in that section is Shift, touch and hold to set the Shift key, double tap to lock the key. In the bottom section, there's undo, where you can undo the last action. Some apps support multiple undos. Then there's the keyboard, where you can show and hide the keyboard. The last button is for disconnecting your iPad from your Mac. These sidebar features are more useful in other apps, especially design apps that involve more heavy use of the Apple Pencil. With Final Cut Pro, the real advantage to sidecar is decluttering the limited screen real estate you have on, say, a MacBook Air or a 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro. For those of you who use the touch bar with Final Cut Pro on 2016 and later MacBook Pros, but then upgraded to newer M1 MacBooks that don't have the touch bar, you can still get a touch bar-like experience using Sidecar. With touch bar enabled, you'll see editing control shortcuts at the bottom of your iPad screen that change as you move from window to window within the Final Cut Pro user interface. Now, I'm not gonna go too in depth on each control option you have using the touch bar because they're pretty extensive. Instead, I'm gonna cover the ones I think are really helpful in enhancing your overall Final Cut Pro experience, but I'll put a link in the description to an Apple support article that does a complete breakdown of everything you can do with the touch bar in Final Cut Pro. Just a heads up, it's a lot of controls. If you click on the browser on your iPad and then select the library you're working in, you'll see some really helpful buttons appear at the bottom of the screen. The import button allows you to bring up the import media window. You can also create a new event or a new project. These are really great for those of you who aren't fully memorized when it comes to keyboard shortcuts. When you're in the browser and are working with clips, you can select a clip 
and use the touch bar to get to the start or end of a clip. If you have a portion of a clip selected, you can use the clear selection button to clear that selection. My favorite button though is for toggling between list mode and film strip mode. This comes in especially handy when you're in the assistant editing phase and logging your footage. When you're in the timeline, you have several controls, including selecting which tool you're using, like the blade or position tool, and audio controls. The audio controls I think are pretty cool. With a clip selected, you can choose to silence that clip. You can add an audio fade in. You can control the volume level of that clip with the volume slider or you can add an audio fade out. I really like the silence button for cutting the volume in an instant. And the last control on the left is for overriding connections. This is the equivalent of pressing and holding the Grav key on a QWERTY keyboard. It allows you to tell a clip to ignore the clips that are connected to it, so you can move, trim, or delete a clip without affecting the clips that are connected to it. Now keep in mind that you have to press and hold this button. You can't just press it once and then make your edit. And then the last button allows for one of the cooler features of the touch bar timeline navigation. You'll see your entire timeline in the touch bar with a slider that lets you quickly navigate your entire timeline. This is one of my favorite features of the touch bar and one I use regularly. From here, I'm gonna leave it to you to explore the touch bar further. You'll see what I mean by there being a ton of controls you can use when editing in Final Cut Pro using Sidecar. One thing I will say about using the touch bar features on my iPad mini 6 using Sidecar, the buttons are pretty dang small and it takes a bit of focus to make sure I hit them just right. On my Stream Deck mobile, I can be more imprecise because the buttons are much larger. So that's Mac OS's sidecar feature paired with Final Cut Pro. If you're a video editor who travels, likes to edit at a coffee shop or a co-working space, somewhere where you can't set up a full desktop style edit bay, sidecar is a great way to enhance your mobile editing workflow and make Final Cut Pro even easier to use on a MacBook. This feature is also great for stationary desktop editors who have a compatible iPad lying around and want to take advantage of their beautiful displays when working with Final Cut Pro. You can use Sidecar with a lot of Macs like the iMac and the Mac Mini. Overall, I think Sidecar is a really great feature in Mac OS, especially for Final Cut Pro editors who already have a newer iPad. I'm looking forward to implementing these touch bar controls even more into my workflow. And anytime I do intensive editing on my 14 inch MacBook Pro, I'll definitely be using Sidecar with my iPad to make the editing process more comfortable and more efficient. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and if there's a really cool feature to Sidecar that I'm missing, I'd love to know about it. If you found this video helpful, I'd greatly appreciate you clicking the like button below. And if you love Final Cut Pro filmmaking and tech, I'd love it if you hit the subscribe button to join the channel. Until the next one, everyone, I'll see you soon.